Hard Times and Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm really glad to have with me once again Peter Talman. He is the uh, he's a geologist. He's a president and CEO and a director of Klondike Gold, and he has had a lot of experience over the years, 30, more than 35 years in the mining industry, and he's had a great deal of success working in Canada, Chile, Mexico, Australia, um, where he's been involved with uh, at least three mineral discoveries, uh, one gold, one anemone, and one zinc deposit in the past, and now he's on to what I believe uh, could very well be another one, perhaps the uh, the most significant deposit, uh, but time will tell. Certainly one that I like a lot. It is uh, one of my larger holdings personally, and of course, a Klondike is also a recommendation in my newsletter. Thanks for joining me again, Peter. Thank you very much for having me again. Just always good to talk to you, um, especially as things seem to be coming into focus more now than, than the first time you and I spoke. But you, you and I met up at the Metals Investor Forum in Vancouver a few weeks back, and you told me that, geologically speaking, your Klondike Gold target, which trends some, I don't know, 55 kilometers, trending northwest, southeast, uh, is comparable geologically, at least part of it is, to the Kamenek Gold deposit. And that was a fairly significant deposit also. Uh, there uh, in the Yukon. It was sold off to Gold Corp for a half a billion dollars or something like that. Of course, you have a lot of work to do uh, before investors can start to get a handle on what your project is worth. But what can you tell our listeners about the significance of the revelation of the similarities between uh, the Kamenek geology and, and what you see at the Klondike project? Well, really, that's, it's trying to look at Klondike in a, in a bigger picture and place it kind of in the world metallogenically. Mm-hmm. And as it turns out, one of the closest comparables is right next door, uh, which was the Kamenak coffee discovery. Mm-hmm. And the rocks that host coffee are exactly the same. They're the undifferentiated Klondike schist unit. Um, all the other units around it are the same. So at coffee, they have three or four different units that are mineralized uh, with gold and those same units in the same order and kind of the same layout are present uh, within the Klondike district and so within mm-hmm. our claims. And then mm. second to that, um, the, the, the rocks at, at Coffee were cut by a, a, a fault, and actually it was a, a particular fault pattern. It looks like a horse tail. Mm-hmm. Um, and that very same fault pattern over the exact same length, basically. So we have the same horse tail with the same length, um, effectively in the same orientation, cutting the same rocks um, mm. at, at, at the Klondike, same as at Coffee. And so uh, currently they're aged, they're dated differently, seemingly, but regardless, from a big picture point of view, you have kind of the same structure cutting the same rocks. So what we're looking at is effectively the same styles of mineralization at coffee that are appearing in the Klondike. And so that's really important because we have a, a road map. We can we mm-hmm. just look at the coffee data and go, ah, well, look at that. Look at all these patterns and their, their faults are mineralized. So are ours. They seem to have the same geometry. Let's go look and, and use their data to guide our exploration. Yeah, that's... Uh so it could be a, a really big advantage, of course, something that's far from the view of most investors, but uh, that it lessens the risk, I suppose, uh, or at least it, in theory, it lessens the risk of your exploration efforts going forward, right? It, it does that, and it also gives us, uh, we've, well, inadvertently, but as it turns out, we've hired all the consultants that, that Kamenak used to kind of advance their projects. And uh, so we have their expertise coming starting next week uh, on the property, and, uh, and we'll basically use them uh, to, as, as outside consultants to help guide our exploration. So, yeah, there's a, there's a great benefit to that. You know, you, this is just a gigantic target, uh, as you've noted, of, of some 55 kilometers. It stretches out. Um, I believe there are maybe, what, Two or three main areas that you're focusing on, I believe, the Lone Star, Ports Creek, and Gold Run. Or is, do I have that right? Are those the right names? Well, they were. Um, you know, the Lone Star is, is number one. Yeah. Um, Gold Run is at the absolute other end of the district. Right, and, at the southern uh, end, and, yeah. And Quartz Creek, 
which is a, a big sorrel anomaly that we don't still know much about, is right in the middle. Um, mm-hmm. And then most recently, it's reevaluating things at, at Nugget. And, and I, Nugget has suddenly gone from my kind of a dark horse here to a, a really significant target for us. Um, so I, I put Lone Star, sorry, Nugget at number two after Lone Star right now. Where is Nugget located on that, that 55-kilometer stretch? Um, it, it's not far from Lone Star, so in the okay. northeast end, uh, Lone Star, the Lone Star Gold Zone is the source of the Bonanza Creek, uh, the trital gold, alluvial gold that was mined. Mm-hmm. That was the discovery in the, for the gold rush, and I think Nugget is just over the ridge from it, um, and it 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 is the source, or at least one of the sources, for El Dorado Creek, which is the second largest um, 1890s gold rush creek. All right, well, just I, I guess it was just yesterday you put out a press release discussing the first core pulled from Lone Star. What are you trying to achieve there, and, and what have you learned from, have you learned anything from the, from the visual uh, observations of the core? Um, well, yeah, it, it's no surprise. So the Klondike itself is known for visible gold. That's that's one difference from coffee, where coffee is mm-hmm. is invisible gold. So they use that; they extract it with a heat bleach. In the Klondike, all the gold is visible, um, and so when we drill it, we can see gold. Um, I don't. I've gotten away from announcing that because you just never know what assay you'll get out of it. But yeah, uh, mm-hmm. at, at Lone Star, we've previously defined a, at least a kilometer of mineralization and strike length uh, open in both directions. What we're doing now is trying to determine the geometry of it by drilling sections, and that's exactly what Kamenek did um, to kind of prove to the world that there was sufficient gold at, at coffee. And so we've, we are in the process of drilling Lone Star on sections down dip, and the geometry looks really good because when we go two or three hundred meters down dip, the mineralization, mm-hmm. because it's on a hillside, the mineralization is still within a hundred meters of surface. Ah. And and I think once we get these sections put up, and so I can show to the all, all investors, here's look at the geometry of this. It's a, it's just a natural open pit um, geometry. Mm-hmm. Go in from the side of the hill, from the mountain. Well, we're we're on we are on the side of the hill, and it, and uh-huh. the mineralization seems to parallel it, so it's it's uh-huh. just in the near subsurface, mm-hmm. um, and so we have a what it's turning out to be. It, it would appear that we have a, a long dip length as well as a long strike length in the mineralization, and that's what we're trying to determine. Um, and so, if we get, we'll outline an area. I think that's going to be reasonably significant and that lets investors at least as a start begin to estimate mm-hmm. you know how much gold could really be there and mm-hmm. uh, I, I hope by mid late summer we'll have we'll have made really good progress in doing that well well we'll certainly be looking forward to that um, yeah I so that's up in the northwestern corner the northwestern towards the northwestern end of this long this long 55-kilometer target. Uh, you also drilled four reconnaissance holes at the Gold Run target at the other end of the of the trend, um, 35 kilometers southeast of there. Uh, what have you learned from those holes, and and are you really are you pleased with what you're seeing, or is it something you expected or, or not? Well, it, so the the Gold Gold Run is as you say, the exact other end of the district, um, but it appears to be on the same structure as the one that controls the Lone Star gold mineralization. And so, you know, let's go jump down there. We found gold. Um, there are a couple of old turn-of-the-century uh, mines and, and, uh, and old workings that had quartz veins with visible gold in them. And so we drilled that. And the question really is not, is there visible golden quartz veins because that's that's the stuff that's attracted everyone throughout the last 120 uh-huh. years. Sure. The question is, is there any gold in the wall rock that hosts those quartz veins? Mm-hmm. And uh, we, no surprise again, we found quartz veins in drilling at Gold Run that have visible gold in them. And we've seen alteration, significant alteration adjacent to the veins 
in core. And the question now, we have to wait for assays, basically. But even the, the proof of concept to me is there's quartzanes there with alteration, whether it's gold-bearing <laughs> or not. That's a live system, and it's very much like the one we see at Lone Star, and it's already worthy of much more exploration. Um, and that's regardless of what results we get. So uh, I'm really hopeful. I, I am personally very hopeful that we get decent results out of the drilling. But regardless, there's a really big target uh, there, and that, that whole area would explain why Gold Run, which is another one of these important uh, 1890s alluvial gold rush creeks, Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we're on to finding another source within the Klondike at Gold Run. No. So how soon uh, do, you, do you expect to have some assays out? You, you, you're drilling now. Will you be batching them, or when might we, we start to see some assays? The, well, I, I had to go look it up. I figured you'd ask that question. And of course I would. <laughs> I, I would expect sometime after your July the 4th weekend holiday, Okay. Um, All right. We would get, we'll get the very first core somewhere in the July first to the fourth is what the lab predicts. But of course, mm-hmm. it's Canada Day for us as well, so I don't believe yeah. the lab is going to be working. It'll be sometime after that. Um, so um, we might and have... I'll probably the first couple couple of holes would be natural. So uh, anyway, I, by mid I would say mid July. Uh, mm-hmm. will be the first holes released from Lone Star. And I guess uh, then it will depend to a certain extent, to a great extent perhaps, on what you see, what your next steps will be for, for Lone Star or for Gold, uh, for gold Run. Or, I'm sorry. Um, uh, well, we have, yeah. so we, we jumped down there. We went and drilled it without really having any information other than looking at uh-huh. it from the surface. And so we have, a, we have an airborne starting next week. Um, there's a regional soil program. We're finally getting to the point where we believe there's lots of gold in the Klondike in our property. And so let's do the regional work necessary to understand the full length of it. Um, and that will co- cover in detail gold run. And I think out of that, we're going to get targets. And then we'll actually have, a, you know, we'll have a, a geology map. Uh, mm-hmm. A soil map and an airborne or a magnetic magnetic map to go target things better. Mm-hmm. Well, <clears throat> well, you mentioned uh, at the start of our conversation a few minutes ago that you now consider Nugget, to which is up there close to Lone Star, uh, to be your second most promising target at this stage. In a news release yesterday, you mentioned that you found new things in the old core that you drilled in 2015, 2016. Uh, in the Nugget Zone, uh, did you miss something there? And if so, could you explain what what you maybe didn't see the first pass? Well, and that, that's really the the discovery story for Klondike right now, and it's it's really exciting. Is that 120 years people have been looking at the quartz veins and sampling them only? That's where gold has historically been found, and we finally we have found it in, disseminated in the schists next to the quartz veins, mm. and for the first time, we started sampling that uh, in, well, 2017, really, uh, and so there's a significant amount of gold. I believe it's like 80% of the alluvial old Klondike, 20 million ounces of gold, comes from disseminated, not the quartz veins. Huh. At, wow. at, at Nugget, we've drilled a total of 23 holes in a, about a kilometer and a half strike length in there. They've all hit although I've previously reported that they hadn't, um, but we've gone back and looked at them and gone, you know what, there is a wide, broad zone in every one of those holes of gold mineralization, and we didn't sample most of the holes in those intervals. Mm. Um, Wow. And so the only, there's two, uh, they weren't released, I'll I'll tell you this now, the, uh, like, whatever, one of the holes, if you look at it from a broad point of view, it's three point two grams over 22 and a half meters. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, those are some of the best holes and drilled on the property, and they weren't released that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so I think that has a lot of potential. Basically, every hole hit over a kilometer and a half, 1.4 oh. kilometers, and we need to do a lot of sampling to get caught up, and, and we know there's disseminated gold there now. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just, 
it's a shift in thinking. You're, yes, I, that was me personally going, right, we only, we're only going to worry about the quartz veins when we initially mm-hmm. started. But, sure. uh, and we didn't know about the disseminated. Now we do. I think it's a great target. All right. Well, you, with such a large project, then uh, I, I guess how are you narrowing it down? Then what? What? How do you decide where to put your your next dollars? I guess it, it has to do with assays. It has to do with potential value. I guess right. Well, and and the shift this year, um, it, it's already begun. But it, we're going to be drilling for looking ahead towards resources, and so mm-hmm. that's really the priority. Um, so Lone Star definitely has some considerable size and potential and so let's let's figure out you know what the geometry of that is and the grade uh, nugget just it's easy to do because we can go resample and there'll be lots of results coming from that this summer um, mm-hmm. and I think they'll all be positive and we'll design a drill program for nugget that will you know kind of focus on can we establish lengths and widths and looking ahead to resources again. Um, and that probably means that Gold Run, as exciting as it is, it'll, it'll certainly get another look and probably another drill program, but it just it'll be quick as a recce because we already have enough on our plate this year mm-hmm. um, to, to do. And mm-hmm. you know, in the meantime, that'll get all the regional data in and looked at, and we can figure out really how big... <laughs> What kind of a tiger we have by yeah. the tail right now? Yeah. Well, what? Um, so your resource probably won't be. You won't have a resource out this year yet. Probably it'd be 2019, or, or might we see a resource? No, yeah, not not this year. If we go on the Kamenak timeline, what we're aiming at is to produce a, a geology 43101 report. Uh, after the end of this field season, and then and Kamenak did that, and actually waited, I think, another two years to produce a, a first resource. Um, we made. I, I'm going to try to do that for the end of 2019. No promises, but uh, mm-hmm. uh, I think we can do that. All our short, all our holes are really short and quick, so we can do a lot of drilling. Anyway, we'll we'll see how that goes. But the end of 2019 yeah. is what I'm aiming at. All right, Peter, you have a, a, a very large target. You've got some very large mining companies up there in the Yukon around you. To what extent do you think they are aware of what you're doing? <laughs> to a great extent, I know they're aware of it. Um, so, and I, I actually I'll be seeing some of them next week. Yeah. All right. Well. I guess you can't say a whole lot more than that, but it's, it's uh, certainly something that I'll be watching carefully for uh, news on. Um, you, and you have enough money, I think, to take you through this year, you told me before, right? Uh, this year, $2.5 million budgeted. Next year, $2.5 million budgeted. That would leave money into 2020. So we're fully funded Wonderful. through in, into 2020. Well, we want to see some really good results come out and the share price go up uh, Several fold from where it is now before you finance again. That's what I hope as a shareholder, anyway. Um, well, and we're, as you said, we're coming into that seasonality too, and yeah. uh, I hope to deliver some really good results into that. And like I said, we're fully financed. But but you know, if the world really loves us, then there's always opportunity for more, and that would expand the program for next year. Yeah. Well, you are limited though in your seasonality. There, you can drill up to how long? What when do you have to uh, shut down? Last year we were drilling still the last uh, the first week of October. Um, uh-huh. Although my my crew aren't that crazy about that. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah. Well, in any event, uh, anything else you'd you'd like to tell us? Uh, any any closing thoughts, uh, Peter? Before no, we I, do- other than you know I, I'm I'm becoming increasingly excited by what I see as great potential um, and. I know that we are figuring out the Klondike and, and finding sources for that old uh, historical uh, alluvial mining district. So it's it's super exciting. Okay, we'll have to leave it at that. Thank you so much, Peter. It is an exciting story. I'm glad I own some shares. Uh, wished I had bought them at this price, but I think compared to where we're heading, I, I think I'm going to be a happy camper. I hope so. We'll see, but we'll certainly find it fascinating. And thanks so much for spending time with us to explain the story to our listeners. 